What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another tutorial in which we create UI. The first thing I want you to do is to create a new file and call that UI.h. The first thing that we're going to create is a very simple button. A button works as follows. Whenever you enter with your mouse inside of the rectangle of the button, then we are going to set this button as being hot. Hot meaning we have entered the rectangle of the button and we are now tracking that the mouse is inside of the rectangle. This is this if check at the very bottom here. Once a UI element is hot, meaning the mouse is inside, we can then keep track of the mouse. AKA if we are hot, then we can can check well have we pressed the mouse button just now if we do so then we set this to being active so if i now press the left mouse button you can see that the button moves down this can be achieved by adding a simple position dot y plus equals two the moment the button is active when the button is active we need to keep track of the mouse position and still check whether we are inside of the rectangle if we happen to release the mouse and we are inside of the rectangle then we return true. So essentially this do button call acts as a boolean function. The moment we have clicked the button, we obviously set the UI element to inactive again. So in the game, we can if check against this button to see whether we have clicked it or not. And this is what we call immediate mode UI. So essentially the way this works is we enter the mouse into the button, then we click and if we release outside, nothing happens. But if we enter the mouse, we click and then we release, the button does something. You can see this in the console right here click in order to understand this a little better i'm going to add in the ui state so at the very top i'm going to post in a bunch of stuff this is a lot and it's easier to look at this from the ui state outwards in the ui state we need to keep track of which element is hot and which element is active this element is uniquely identified by an id this id stores a layer and an id this is a unique value and this is a value that keeps track of well in which layer is this button so if we have two buttons on top of each other we need to know which one is on top and which one is below in order to do that in the ui state we can add a layer and that can be a simple int variable that is zero at the beginning and then in our do button call when we set the button to hot we can add in the layer of the ui state right now i'm not going to touch the layer because it's a very very simple application but this can be very useful when stacking stuff on top of each other so what does this set hot function do i'm going to put this above the do button function it takes in an id and a layer and then it compares the ui states hot this frame layer with the current layer and if this layer is greater or the same then then it will update this hot this frame variable and you might be wondering why do we need hot this frame and the reason for that is because immediate mode ui lags one frame behind and it's best explained by adding in another function called update ui the update ui function only assigns the hot last frame to hot this frame now why is this important when we do a button in the game and we only keep track of what is currently hot you might notice that we need to reset this every frame we need to forget about it so we can think about it the next frame because a button might enter this frame. The way this works is you can have a code flow that depends on a variable and if that code flow does a button only and then you click that button then all of a sudden you switch something to true then below that there might be another button that pops up and these two buttons could be on top of each other and when these two buttons are on top of each other the first time the button gets called in the code then it will check well what is hot right now if there's nothing hot if i have nothing from the last frame left over in terms of information then it sees oh the mouse is inside of me i should be hot i'm gonna set myself to hot oh i'm actually hot which means i'm interactable and so when the second button comes along it sees that oh something is already hot but i'm on top so i'm hot too and now you have two buttons that are actually on top of each other and they are both hot and so we need to keep track of the last frame's hotness of the button in order to understand well which button is actually hot which one is on top of the other button and this is what this update loop does and so whenever we do a button we check whether it is hot and this is hot function checks was it hot last frame and is it the actual id that i'm looking at is the id the same so if a button has an id i uniquely identify that button and therefore we know okay so it was hot last frame it is hot now great it's a little bit complicated but if you think about it it will work and i've also 
edit in the is active functions basically it does the same thing do we have something in the active id and is the id the same as the active id that is the if check right here at the top and we set something to active if we clicked the left mouse button inside of our button and it is actually hot and the is active or set active function only assigns the active ui element it doesn't even take the layer into account because we don't need to keep track of it at all actually we only need the layer for the hotness you might have noticed that at the bottom here the point in rect function is red and the reason for that is because well the mouse position that we are using here which is the world mouse position actually and the reason why this mouse position works is because the ui camera is the exact same dimension as the game camera if you're using a different ui then you need to compute the ui mouse position as well the game's mouse position will not work i'm just pointing that out because that can be a problem uh, i decided to make myself easy or make it myself easy by using the word space uh, but yeah we need to give it a conversion from ivec2 to vector2 and so in order to do that i want to do a simple function in the schnitzel lib point and rect just gonna add in another handle here at the bottom it is a simple point and rect function that calls in the existing point and rect function by converting the integer vector2 to a float vector2 and now in the ui.h there should be no more problems but we are not done yet you might have noticed the ui element and the ui text a ui element is a sprite and a position and takes in draw data and the ui text is a simple c array with amount of characters right now i decided to have 256 characters it has a position and the text data and we keep track of about 100 texts and we don't need this max ui elements actually but we also keep track of 100 ui elements now why do we need this array why do we need these two arrays the reason for that is because the last time in case you remember when we set the frame rate to 30 frames per second and we added in the text in the simulate function every frame every other frame we would draw the text and then the other frame we would not draw the text we would update the game slower than we would render so 60 frames per second was rendering and 30 frames per second was drawing so we would have it text drawn one frame and the other frame it was empty and then text drawn again in the other frame and it would alternate between what we would like to do is draw the text all the time and then update the text or the ui only when we actually simulate the game and so we keep track of these ui elements and uh, when we do a button at the very bottom let me scroll this up a little bit we need to add this ui element to the ui elements and it's, it's very simple right we just supply the sprite id the position and the draw data and then we add that to the ui elements one thing i didn't touch on yet is the rectangle for the collision i want to quickly go into this we have a sprite id that we supply to the button and it is dependent this rectangle is dependent on the sprites size in order to understand how that works is i'm going to add two sprites to the texture atlas again if you want to have this texture go to the github repository and download the file the link will be in the description of course but these two buttons are 32 pixels by 16 pixels and we will draw the buttons around the center and so what we do is we take the center position and then remove half the size of it to get to the top left and then we take the entire size of the sprite as a rectangle so the rectangle is always top left aligned and the sprite is being drawn in the middle so we position the ui elements in the middle and then the button function will make sure that the rectangle is properly aligned with top left and this is what's happening right right here you can see the division by two here and the offset and x and y and then we just check for collision right here in the point and rect function this is the do button function we also would like to do texts the do ui texts and do ui or do format ui text functions all we do here is we take a text and a position and text data then we create a ui text mem copy into the field of the text store the character count and then supply the position and text data and store that in the array of ui text so we can draw this in the game outside of the simulate function and then the same thing for the format ui text it takes in very arguments just like with the logger then it formats the text and it draws the ui text this is not a perfect solution because we have the same functions in the rendering interface you can see that right here it is more or less a duplicate but not really it works though and that is the most important part it does work it is not perfect but it does what we need to do and we can move on but if you have any cool ideas or see how you can improve this feel free to do so right there's nothing set in stone in this and i'm just giving you a 
general idea of what you could do and uh, giving you solutions to problems that I have faced in the past. Because this is my solution. That's how I came up with this. Now that we have the ability to draw text in the UI and do buttons, it is time to connect it to the game and the engine. The first thing would be to connect it to the game. So switch over to game.h and at the very top, we include UI.h. And then at the very bottom, in the update game function, we have to supply the UI state in. And then we also have to update the game.cpp update function. Right here, the update game, we have to supply the UI state in as well. Now that we have supplied the UI state here, we need to supply that and set the pointer in here. So UI state is assigned to UI state in. Now that we have the pointer, we also need to connect it to the engine. And we do that in the main.cpp file. First, at the very top, we need to include the UI.h file. Then we don't need to forget to actually allocate the UI state because it is another pointer. If you take a look at the UI.h file here, there is a global section that is a static UI state pointer. You should be familiar with this. You have seen this in the input, in the rendering state, all of this. This needs to be passed around in the engine and in the game. So we need to make sure that we allocate this right here. That's what we are doing. Additionally, further down below in the update game function, we have to supply this. So in the update game, we supply the UI state as a pointer. And then in the wrapper function for the update game, we supply the UI state in and then supply that in the function call as well, in the pointer. Now, while I was copy pasting stuff in here, I noticed that I got a redefinition of max UI elements that happened because in the UI.h at the very top, I forgot a pragma once because we are including the game.header file in the engine and we are including the UI header file in the engine. So basically the UI.h got included twice. Make sure that you have the pragma once at the top here. But now the UI is actually connected to the game. Now, instead of putting this draw UI text outside of here, we can get rid of this. And then in the simulate function at the very top, we can add that in. But instead of drawing a UI text, we can do a UI text. But if we were to build right now and run the game, very fast what would happen is our array would be full and that is because we keep on drawing text and we add to this we need to call the update ui function this one right here and that happens above the simulate function in the game so before we simulate we need to make sure that we update the ui state to make sure that everything is clean and then we fill in the ui state in the game if you reverse this order so if you simulate first and then update the ui there's nothing to draw because everything would be cleared because an update ui we clear the elements and the texts okay so make sure that this order is correct that's really important but even if we now run the game we would not actually draw anything we also need to make sure that we draw the elements that are stored in the ui state and that happens below the simulate loop or basically after the fixed loop where we draw everything we add in two sections or one section for the ui drawing the ui is very simple we loop over all of the UI elements, we get ourselves the UI element back, and then we draw the sprite using the sprite ID, the position, and the draw data. And then further down below for the text, we do the same thing. We look through the texts, get ourselves the text back, then we draw the UI text using the text of the UI text, the position, and the text data. And this function calls down to draw UI text, that one that we did last time. Now, if we build and run the game, the text should look exactly the same, but there's one key difference. We can keep this running and go to the game.h at the very top here instead of 60 i want to do 30 times per second we only update at 30 frames per second now but what you might notice what is different from the last time this doesn't stutter and the reason for that is because we are only drawing what is inside of the array and that is kept until we simulate again so for example over here in the simulate function in the game we can now do a button but in order to do a button we need an id the button id that we generate and we need to actually have the sprites we didn't add the sprites yet to the assets we have them in our texture but we also need to add them in the assets so first i think i want to add in the sprites in order to do that we go to the assets.h and then at the very top here we add in the sprite button play and save then we scroll down to the get sprite function at the very bottom we add in the sprite button play and save one of them is at 80 and 0 32 by 16 pixels and the other one is 80 and 16 32 by 16 pixels if we save this now in the game we have the button but we also need to have this line id in order to add this i want to add that to the schnitzel lib at the very top where you have the constants or the defines right here this line id takes an index and then it bit shifts up the line of the file that this 
this macro was used in so for example in our game.cpp file it would take the line 98 then bit shift this up which would give us a very high number and then it also uses the index and ors that together it basically tries to generate a very high random number and as long as you don't have the same line with the same index happening in two different files you will always generate a unique number i have to tell you it's not perfect for me though it works because i put everything that is related to the game inside the game and i will always have different line numbers here and if i do this in the for loop for example i take the index in the for loop to determine a unique line id so if i have like four ui element index and then i need a button for each ui element then i would add in the ui element index into this line id and it would generate me a random index again not perfect if you have a better way of generating unique ids feel free to use that but we need this line id this unique id to know which button is on top and which button is hot like we talked about earlier this will then let us do a button like we saw earlier that is basically doing the callback for us the callback is this if check this is the immediate mode the moment we click this button we determine what we do here and the code is right next to the button it's very cool i really like this way of doing ui and uh, i don't think it will ever switch now we have a button in the middle that whenever we click we get a click trace at the bottom and it goes green but you might notice that it puts a little something behind and also you might notice whenever the button goes green the tiles come become green and that is actually a bug from last time in the game cpp at the very bottom where we draw the tiles we need to get ourselves a material index for now i'm just going to use color white but if we don't do this then they will be green now if the button goes green they will stay white or normal okay but you might have noticed that when i click the button these tiles get spawned if you don't want that there's one last helper function that i didn't paste in in ui.h let's close this at the very last before the button these are utility functions we can have this bool ui is hot and bool ui is active basically they only return whether something is hot last frame or something is currently active and then you can use these two functions to check oh i click the left mouse button in the simulate function here you can use these right here whether the mouse is down and then you can check well and the ui can't be hot you know if you do that right now then there's not going to be paste anything is going to be pasted but the moment i go out of this it is going to be pasted and so you could also add in if you don't want it to be active now if i click the button and then hold the mouse it's not going to be pasting any tiles now that i release i can go outside and paste tiles next to it these are very helpful functions i think they should belong in any ui and yeah that's about it you can do a lot with just this one button you can go and do wrapper functions that make it so that whenever the button is active you change the position of the button to where the mouse is now you have like some sort of sliding button there's many things you can do with just this one button uh, and yeah feel free to experiment and i hope you like the tutorial so if you did please leave a like and subscribe it really means a lot and helps out the channel a lot i'll see you in the next one have a good one peace